What's going on everybody, Gourmet here. Today I am bringing you guys a strikerless tactic that I personally used on my save with Wrexham AFC in the Vonorama National on my Twitch save. The reason why I have not had a video out for the past week is because I've been working on getting this tactic to you guys because I was not originally 100% sold on this tactic because when I originally tried it out, it was when I went down a man in a match, down to 10 men, and I was like, you know what? We can't really play with a striker right now, so we're going to go strikerless. We were down in that match and ended up coming back and winning it with this tactic, and we ended up winning the league. We did it today, actually, the day that I'm recording on Friday. So if you guys would like to check out the VOD, feel free to do so. You can catch me over at Twitch dot tv slash white if you guys would like to check it out or any stream in the future as well also please feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe if you do enjoy the video and now without further ado let's get into it all right so with this 433 strikerless tactic like i said i wasn't 100 percent sold on it until i was able to truly have the players necessary to make it work and once I had the players necessary to make it work we went on a tear in the Vonorama National I mean getting out of the Vonorama National in the first place is highly difficult but doing it in a strikerless tactic in your first season that is something else especially with this side because what wrecks we were predicted to finish 10th and we won the league pretty comfortably uh, as well as adding the FA Trophy, and I will go over all that in a little bit. So first things first, the tactic and formation. Like I said, 4-3-3-0. We have two wingers here on attack, shadow striker on attack. We've got two ball-winning midfielders on defend, a deep-lying playmaker on defend, two wingbacks on support, a no-nonsense center back on defend, and a central defender on defend as well as a goalkeeper on defend usually i like going with a sweeper keeper on defend but being that i was in the vamrana national i wasn't sold on the idea of having a sweeper keeper just yet uh, i wanted to make sure that we were uh, solidified back there and we weren't doing anything too too risky uh and it definitely definitely ended up working out for us now a lot of you are probably wondering, okay, being that this worked for a Vonorama National side, will it work for bigger clubs in the top, top leagues around Europe? Absolutely it will. I did two other tests with this. Uh, both of them were done with Manchester United. I just, I felt the players that I kind of wanted to have used uh, ideally, were players that are at Man United, especially Bruno Fernandez, because I had him at Shadow Striker, and they were phenomenal. Uh, now it is for bigger clubs. Definitely, definitely use it for cups. Use it for the Euros, uh, meaning Europa League. Use it for the Champions League, FA Cup, uh, Carabao, DFB Pokal, the uh, Copa Italia, all that stuff. Use it for those, whereas with the league, definitely have something that is more attacking uh, because this is a much more defensive type play style. But trust me, you're still going to get plenty of goals. Uh, but with the player roles, with the wingers on attack, everything is normal except for cross, aim, far, post. So you want the crosses aimed at the far post. I didn't think it was going to be that good. It completely changed my mind on where I want crosses to be hit at. And I, from wingers now, I highly suggest having your crosses from your wingers aimed at the far post. Now, wing back wise, everything is the same besides crosses aimed at center. So they're gonna be hitting your shadow striker and everyone else is left as is as you can see i did not change anything on anybody else everyone else is normal the only things player instruction player instruction wise there we go i can english all that i changed was crosses aimed at far post for both wingers and then the crosses aimed at center for the wing backs now 
the mentality that we play on is positive, but I did play on attack for a little while and I enjoyed it. So you can definitely do positive or attacking for sure. Now in possession, we play fairly narrow. We pass into space. We overlap on the left and the right and we play out from our defense. We work the ball into the box and we have mixed crosses, which usually I like going for low crosses, but the mixed crosses were phenomenal for this tactic. Passing directness is shorter and we play with a higher tempo. Now when we are in transition, we counter press and counter and we distribute to our fullbacks and center backs. Now with the defensive shape, we use the offside trap. We have a higher line of engagement attacking wise, which sometimes, all right, sorry about that. Got a phone call. Where was I? Uh, a higher line of engagement. So. I played with a higher line of engagement, but sometimes I played with a much higher and a higher defensive line, depending on if we needed a goal badly or not. You can get away with playing much higher and higher, but I do recommend playing higher line of engagement and a standard defensive line. Now we use tighter marking. We go with a more urgent pressing intensity. We prevent short goalkeeper distribution and stay on feet. Because when I didn't have it on stay on feet, we kept on getting cards. And I don't like getting cards because at the Venerama National level, you need all your best players available at all times. So I put it on stay on feet. And honestly, I recommend keeping it on stay on feet at any level you are at. Unless you are okay with being a little bit more risky and have some good backup options if your starters do get carded. Now, squad wise with this tactic, it was phenomenal for plenty of reasons actually hold on one moment we're gonna go back to the set pieces because the corners were insane this corner set piece got us 19 goals throughout all the competitions we were in it got us 19 goals which was 20 percent of our total offense it was absolutely incredible I have a video for this called Elite Corner Set Piece. I'll link it somewhere here on the screen for you guys to check out. This is attached to the tactic that I will be putting in my Discord. So if you guys would like to have this tactic, join the Discord. It will be in the FM21 Tactics link area, whatever group. I don't know what it's called. but. It will be in there. You guys can take the file, plug it in to your files for FM21, and it will be good to go. No matter what language you have the game in, it will convert everything, and you will be good to go, and you can use it for whatever team you are doing. But yeah, if you guys want this tactic, I will be having it in my Discord. I will be linking my Discord in the description down below, so definitely make sure to check that out. But getting back to this corner set piece, we have got our two best aerial presence players on the near post and work near post it's absolutely insane you swing the ball in to the near post it's going to hit one of the two every time our near post guy actually got the most goals because usually it's the lurk near post guy getting the most goals but the near post guy had 15 goals on the season every single one of those goals came from a corner so 15 of our 19 goals from our corners came from one dude. It was absolutely insane. Now, sometimes the ball would miss them and it would go to the player here on get forward or on mark keeper. But I mean, it usually ended up in the back of the net. So it was a lot of fun to watch. Anytime we got a corner, me and the rest of chat thought, okay, this has a very high probability of going in. Uh, but free kicks left them as is but they were elite honestly they were incredible we had some pretty pretty good goals off of it throw-ins we keep them on short i like them on short now i don't really like the long throw you can if you know how to get away with the long throw now after the patch feel free to use the long throw but i highly highly recommend keeping it short uh, now we are going in to the squad and we are going over what player did what. So Denzel Boadu 
was our Shadow Striker. He had 20 goals and 7 assists. He is very, very good. But he is a player that is like solely fixed on playing through the middle because he, in his player traits, runs with ball through center. And he the only positions he can play are through the middle. But he is very good at what he does. So if you are a lower league team, definitely look into getting Denzu Buladu. I absolutely love this dude. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's actually uh, related to Mirren Buladu because they are both of Ghanaian descent. Uh, and he is English, but Mirren is Dutch. So they're definitely related somehow. But this dude was our shadow striker. He was absolutely insane. Like I said, he had 20 goals, 7 assists, average rating of a 7.04, three-player of the matches as well. Kelleher was the central defender who had 15 goals. He also had one assist. He had nine player of the matches and had an average rating of 7.53. The dude is absolutely insane. Here is what his attributes look like. His heading is only 11, but that jumping reach is 16 and his height is 6'6". Six six. So he is ideal for these corner set pieces. If you can have a center back like that if you can have two of them like that props to you you have got gods for the corner set piece jordan davies is absolutely phenomenal he is one of our star players he ended up having 12 goals and 13 assists in the league he had nine goals and 12 assists he was very very good i really really like that kid uh brought in enzo robise who ended up having 12 goals and four assists Yassine Ben Almani, who we call Ben Almani, the Rockin' Moroccan. He is absolutely insane. He It says he doesn't enjoy big matches, but that is a total, total lie. He is insane in big matches. And he was very, very good. He ended up with 10 goals and 10 assists. He was very, very good. Had some very, very good solo plays on his own. Uh, David Jones, we also brought in. He had 8 goals, 17 assists. He led the team in assists. Uh, Devontae Redmond had four goals, one assist. James Horsfield with three and three. Tyler French with two and three. Theo Vassell with two and three. Sean Pearson with one. Elliot Durrell with one and four. Reese Hall Johnson with one and one. Same with Matt Carter. Jay Harris had a goal, and Dior Angus had an assist. Reagan Booty also had two assists, which I brought him in later in the season. He was very, very good. He usually played as our deep line playmaker. And Dan Jarvis had an assist as well. Actually, yeah, ja Jamie Record had nine assists too. And what's great about Jamie Record, he was massive defensively. Yes, his defensive stats are not elite by any means, but for this level, he was very, very good. And if you have a left back in this tactic that can be pretty, pretty good tackling-wise, you are going to get a lot of takeaways on that left side. So definitely, definitely try and get a good left back. But now we're going to look at the competitions. Like I said, we won the Von Rama National League by 10 points. We won it with 92 points. We had 27 wins, 11 draws, 6 losses. We ended up winning the FA Trophy as well, 3-1 over AFC Telford. So we had two trophies in our first season with them. It was awesome. Uh, now... Team overview-wise, we dominated in a lot of things. Obviously, most points per game because we won the league. We had the most goals with 72. Most shots, four. We were in seventh with 517. Fewest shots against. We were in second with 311 against. We had the best pass completion at 84%. Most possession with 56%. So those go hand in hand. I absolutely love that. We were not in most tackles one, and that is the only one we are not in. We were second in dribbles made per match. Well, yeah, through the season, I mean, through the season. We had 92. We were first in most shutouts with 22, and second in fewest conceded with 33. So very, very good all around. Now, player-wise, Denzil Boadu was tied for six with 17 goals in the league. Assist-wise, David Jones and Jordan Davies tied for second with 12 in the league. Most shots, Kelleher had 109, tied for seventh. Most player of the match performances, Kelleher was in second with seven for the league, and Jordan Davies tied for third with six. 
Most key day, yeah, most key Davies, most key passes. Jordan Davies with 114 in third. David Jones with 102 in sixth. Best pass completion: Jay Harris with 92%. James Horsfield with 90%. Most tackles won. We did not have anyone in. Most dribbles made. Yassine Ben Almani with 26 dribbles made. Jordan Davies with 23. They were in 5th and 7th. Most shutouts. 3rd with Dominic Rogerson, our keeper, with 19. And Dominic Rogerson was in 3rd with 27 goals allowed. We were very, very good all around. I absolutely loved it. Now I'm going to be showing you guys a few clips from some goals that we scored in this tactic and talk over a few other things as we do. All right, so this goal was absolutely insane. I could not believe, at this level of Von Rama National, that we scored a goal like that. I will play it one more time for you guys. So we played it in from deep to Robise. Robise then passes it back to Jarvis. French to the back post. It was absolutely absurd. Like, a goal of that quality at this level is phenomenal, and it is because of this tactic. Here's another one that I believe is to the back post. Same game, to Robise. It's just elite. The tactic is elite, folks. And here is one from the corner to Kelleher. The dude is insane. Now, this match is a special one because two players in this match against Yeovil ended up having hat tricks. One is Denzu Baladu, who is the shadow striker for us. The other is Kelleher, the center back. And that goal right there is off of a free kick. Like I said, the free kick is also very, very solid. Don't sleep on the free kick. But here is another one from a corner. He was absolutely insane. The corner tactic is absolutely insane. Here's another one that is going to be coming from Denzu Boadu running through the middle. Absolutely phenomenal. Slotting it home. I'm telling you guys, this tactic is insane. No matter what level you use it at, it is incredible. And here is yet again another one from Kelleher from a corner. And then also Ben Elmani had one this match too. We ended up beating Yeovil 7-2. It was absolutely incredible. It was our biggest win of the season. But I'll show you guys some of the results that we ended up happening. Well, not happening, but having. Uh, that Bourne Wood match that I showed you originally ended up being 4-4. It was a absolute thriller. I was quite upset that we ended up drawing, but it is what it is we ended up winning the league anyways but we had a good 3-0 win over Sully Moore, 7-2 over Yeovil 2-0 over Knotts County which I did not expect we had a very very good run the other day where we didn't allow a goal at all we didn't allow a single goal through eight games no seven games seven games we did not allow a goal it was absolutely phenomenal uh, but as you guys can see, we went on an absolute tear during this season. And it ended up being a very, very good season overall with winning the league, with having an FA Trophy victory, and with being able to bring you guys this tactic, uh, which we ended up scoring 93 goals in total, had 85 assists. Like I said, 19 goals from that corner set piece tactic which is 20% of our offense. So, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. And like I said, I'll be linking my Discord down below so that you guys can drop this tactic into your files if you guys would like to try it out. And like I said earlier, not only works with lower level teams, but also with the big dogs. So definitely, definitely try it out. If you guys did happen to enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.